Hey guys, Youngblood back with you from my Mexican vacation where I think I picked up a small little bug on my way back in the plane. So if I sound a little bit funny, that's what's going on. But while I was gone, uh, they decided to do the ESF update, releasing the new weapons, and we're going to go ahead and start talking about those in this video. Um, basically what we're going to see is this video is going to talk about the Hornets, and then we'll do one later on on the Coyotes, and then another one on the Kestrel. But what I want to start these videos with is a comparison to the weapon that it's going to challenge it for its role. So for the Hornet, I think the obvious competitor is going to be rocket pods. So let's go ahead and jump in and do some time to kill testing. All right, so for those of you that don't know, the Hornets are basically just wire-guided missiles, very similar to that of the Phoenix that you can kind of control. Now, what are the benefits to using this? Well, we'll talk about that in just a minute, but here we got some time to kill testing, and rocket pods are on the right, Hornets are on the left. You can see, at least in this first example against a Prowler head-on, which isn't an ideal situation, it takes about eight seconds longer to get the kill with the Hornet. So, that in itself doesn't scream like you've got an advantage. So let's try a harder target, like a Sunderer, and again, we're just doing rocket pods versus Hornets, hitting roughly the same spot on the same side of the Sunderer. So here again, you can see the rocket pods, may, each rocket's going to do less damage, but you fire so many more of them so much faster that you end up doing quite a bit more damage in a shorter time span. Here you can see it only took 24 seconds with rocket pods to take down that Sunderer. But the Hornets, you're still um, you know, kind of chipping away and hacking away and working your way through it. Um, and if I remember what my number was right, it takes 37 seconds to actually um, finish it off. So that is a big difference overall in time to kill. So at this point of the video, you're probably sitting there scratching your head saying, So, Youngblood, why would I ever use a Hornet over the rocket pods? And that's a really good question, because my answer right back to you is going to be, You really shouldn't. And let me give you some reasons why. The only real benefit to the Hornet is that it's user-guided, so you can aim and adjust for moving vehicles. That being said, unless you're really close, that's pretty challenging to do. And the speed of the Hornet is so slow that it can be difficult to kind of track. Now, it's not impossible, and you get better the more that you use them, and I'm not saying they're useless. All I'm saying is there is a much better option in the Rocket Pods. The rocket pods are fire and forget. They're really easy to kill infantry with. Um, you know, they, they go on for a very long distance, whereas the Hornets have a uh, limited range at about 450 meters. Um, rocket pods are pretty good for strafing. They've got better velocity. Um, pretty easy to use against, like, uh, galaxies. Um, they're better. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Um, I mean... You can kill a tank in a single pass if you want to, if you land them all in the rear. Um, you know, about the only other thing the Hornets have is you're a little less noticeable when you fire them, I guess. I mean, I read that from somebody that posted that as a benefit, and I didn't even think about it. So, yes, you don't have 12 streaking, flaming rockets leaving your ship. If that's about it, why are you possibly going to use the Hornets over the rockets? Now, let me say this. In a way, I'm glad the Hornets are starting out weak sauce because it's a much, much easier to increase a weapon, to buff a weapon, to make it better than it is to make something overpowered and then have people bitch and moan because this weapon was OP and it's always going to be OP even though they make adjustments to it. So if they wanted to play this, if SOE wanted to play this you know, conservatively and release this weapon in a format where it's going to be a little bit weak, I'm okay with that as long as the adjustments come later. Speaking of adjustments, if I was to see some, I would think that a couple of things need to happen to this weapon. First and foremost, I'd prefer to see a different reticle. The little square rocket prod reticle, I'm not crazy on. Not a huge issue, but when you're firing from longer distances, you know, towards the edge of that 450 meters, it's a little bit harder to be pretty precise with that. And this is a weapon that you need to be precise with. If you can't spam them, you need to land your shots. So that would be one. Two, probably the most important one, is they need to be faster. The rockets need to travel faster and cover more ground. Um, and then three, I think they should do a little bit of splash damage to armor. Um, I know that's a trait that's a little bit more similar to some other <coughs> excuse me, weapons and vehicles, but I think something needs to happen to make it slightly more effective because it is. It's, a, it's supposed to be a side grade to rocket pods, but where it stands right now, it's not even close. And I think rocket pods are fine where they're at. So... I think the Hornets need to get a little bit more benefit. 
That being said, the Hornets are a hell of a lot of fun to use. I haven't really enjoyed flying with the Hornets. So, um, th there's a place for just this pure enjoyment of it. But, again, if you're looking for pure effectiveness, don't waste your time on the Hornets. Stick with the Rocket Pods. So, before we wrap this up, I wanted to give you just a couple real quick do's and don'ts with this weapon to help you be a little bit more successful if you decide to use it. And again, it is kind of fun, so if you want to have some fun with it, give it a try. You can try all this weapon. Do not hover. Do not just stay in one spot and try and guide these in. Unless you're at the edge of that 450 meters or you're hovering just right above a tank, you are going to be in a boatload of trouble. Not only is it going to take you longer to get sped up to get out of there, but you're an easy target for even like the dumb fires to line up. So don't hover in one place. If you're going to use these, you want to use them on strafing runs. Think about um, as you're flying in towards your target, you fire. Um, you know, if you're going towards a tank, go towards an angle where they can't shoot you. Watch out for sky guards, those sorts of things. Now, another thing you don't want to do is use these during dogfights. Now, there are moments in dogfights where this is okay, but don't expect to be able to fire these off and curve them up into your target because the the vehicles fly faster than these rockets. I mean, you'll even notice in some times that you're going to pass your own rockets. So they're not fast enough to be effective in dogfights, except when somebody is turning in front of you. So like if you're following somebody and they're trying to do one of those turns where they basically a reverse maneuver to get right on you, um, it is effective to use these at that point. Um, you know, if you can unleash them and you know they're going to be kind of in that same spot, you can really blast them pretty good. Or the flip side of it is, I guess, if you're getting shot at from behind, you could turn around and let a couple of these go if, they're, if your target is flying straight at you. Again, probably not your best option. Now, the last thing that I actually wanted to talk about real quick, and this goes for all the secondary weapons, but one of the big changes that happened with the Afterburner cert line is that now whenever you equip a secondary weapon or a non serted afterburner, you're going to notice significantly less afterburning fuel, meaning that you could easily be outmaneuvered by a better pilot that's only using a nose gun. And considering the nose guns typically do the most damage, um, that's what's going to put you in a lot of trouble if you're trying to go air to air. With coyotes, and we'll talk about this in the next video, you get to counteract that just a little bit, knowing that you've got an air to air weapon, but the afterburner tanks are going to be problematic if you're not carrying them and trying to get into air-to-air -air situations. So just something to take note of. So I think that's all I wanted to cover with Hornets. Um, if you guys have questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Uh, stay tuned later this week. I'll get the uh, Coyote one out and then uh, I'll also get around to the Kestrel. Uh, and then I'll also cover some you know tips and tricks with the air radar and such. So. Um, let me know if there's anything you want to see, any questions. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't yet, subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later. Take care.